everyone. So let's start with Unified Service Disk. So basically Unified Service Disk, you know, it's acts like a framework which is built on user interface interaction. So you might be thinking, what is this user intra uh, interface interaction? So to be more precise, uh, it, you can say that it is a point of human computer interaction and communication in a device, basically. So how, what does this USD do? So you can uh, say that, you know, USD is like a add into the D D65 app. So which helps to build or create desktop applications basically. So since it's an add-in, it helps to purely build CRM or upon need basis integrates to numerous, um, you know, LOB that is line of business. So with one computer, within one computer, okay. So, uh, so this whole forms to complete a 360 degree view to customer interactions. And also, so if you can see we have this uh, so this explanation helps to achieve by making use of sessions so uh, you might be thinking what is the sessions over in the uh, here in usd so whenever you try to search for customers information in usd the system fetches the information from the microsoft dataverse and stores it stores it in the system uh, sorry in the session so the information about the session and the fetched customer record is stored in the session context so this is how the entire session works here so these sessions might automatically help to load multiple applications uh, like you know in the sense of tabs so or it might involve using agent scripts so in agent uh, using agent scripts to provide contextual questions and answers to speed handling of customer queries. So let me move to the next slide. So if you can see here, I just have a sample picture over here. So if you can see the first one is the toolbar and next we have the session tabs. So here we have multiple session tabs you can open and we have tabs within the session. So this and this varies. And also we have here to the left, we have the agent script. So this agent script is what I'm going to talk next about. Meanwhile, let me, uh, you know, just tell you about what is the importance of this USD here. So integrate, so this uh, helps in integrate services and contact center experience by, being, by bringing multiple uh, apps together in unified service desktop. So and also this is a tool which helps customer like what they are needing for or how do they require it or when they might require it in a timely manner. Next, if we have the key features of this USD, so how this, uh, you know, USD widely used, you can say. So for uh, example, we have a call center. So that is actually a great example for USD. So for call center purpose, which involves or provides, you know, services via email, chats, telephone, so etc. And also this enhances the agent productivity all as well. And also we have uh, this new feature, um, which is now as a virtual agent chat box, now widely, which is used among customers to provide instant help. And also we do have, you know, application integrations, uh, like, you know, within itself, like Java, then mainframe systems uh, and legacy systems. So most of it in USD is configuration. Um, you don't require code at all here. So you, you need to, know how session management helps here and also we have agent scripting is one other point here and also overall it acts as a 360 degree view between the customer and the agents so that is the reason we call usd as a 360 degree view um, view customer support thing so how does this usd work here so okay now let's come to the point like how it works so usd is a client app which runs on a local machine but the 365 uh, app acts as a server where most of the configuration and the maintenance are done. Upon installing this USD, uh, you can, you know, uh, you, we have few solutions are added to the D65 CE app, which creates multiple entries in the instance. So all these configurations can be stored in these en entities. So if you can just refer this diagram, it quickly shows you how it works. So if you uh, if you see here, we have LOB systems that is line of business systems, which gets connected to the USB, USD client. 
So here we have the CTI events, nothing but the telephone, email, all those things comes to under the CTI, which further gets connected to the CRM. So that's what I was saying. So upon installing this, if you add few solutions to the D65 app, then which creates multiple entries in the instance. So all these configurations will be stored in these entities. So once USD is opened, all the information related to the configuration is automatically cached on the client system here. So like how do we get started with this um, you know uh, usd so first you will be uh, you know you need, you'll be needing a crm dynamics uh, license which includes the usd that is unified service disk so if you are an old style crm license then you will have to have a professional one uh, so that needs to be having a license one or an enterprise plan one so we can download the usd from the microsoft here so using this link I'll be pasting this link after the session so you can just refer to it. So you will also find sample packages which will be there already as a .exe file. And you will we also have a sample application package also while installing USD. So which will give you a great start for building your any kind of agent applications. So here you can just see how it looks. So this is how it looks. A unified service desk. So I was saying you in the previous, um, pay, uh, you know, slides that you know this is the toolbar and this is the session tabs and all the same way. This is how it looks. So moving on to the next one, I'm not able to. So I was talking about the agent scripts previously. So what is this agent scripts here? So use a, you use agent scripts type of hosted control to define a call script that provides instructions to the call center. So a call center agent to guide them during a customer interaction for a given session. So let's check on the example that I have here. The, so the first thing to do before using agent script uh, is to create a hosted control. So how do you create a hosted control? So if you just go ahead and you know click on the so before going ahead, uh, we have to create a hosted control which helps in displaying the agent script. So uh, you just need to go ahead and fill in the name and then uh, you know just give the unified service this component type. So this specifies the type of hosted control like you know toolbar, container, agent scripts, etc. So now uh, you can just go ahead. So go ahead and choose the agent scripts here. So choose the display group. Uh, so whichever is appropriate for that. And then next go to the USD in the Resistify app and which is under settings and then select the agent scripts. So you will see the screen below here. If you just click on new, you will be routed to a new, uh, you know, new page. So let's say that, you know, we have you we want a user to USD agent to just ask customer, you know, how they are. So it is just like a greetings thing. So agent scripts basically like, you know, like you have to create a greeting. Uh, like if I say hi, I want someone to respond there just like that. Uh, the same thing will be created here. So we'll go ahead and create here. So if you see here, the name is greeting in the name session and you have to fill in the script text. So like, hello, how are you doing today? So something like that. Then we'll call our script greeting. So if you observe carefully, this acts like a chatbot. So wherein it asks questions, gives options to choose whether we are, you know, options if we have given like good or bad, something like that it would give. So let's create now uh, like two answers for this greeting so good and bad so if you see here we have uh, we also had in the previous if you see answers if you go ahead and create uh, click on that you will be uh, able to create the answers accordingly so one is good and one is bad something like that you can go ahead and create and also now in order to use this we'll add the agent scripts to our account load so go to the uh, go to the account uh, hosted control so if you just go there under the settings i mean in the unified service desk account so here it will be showing you the general one so here from the events available we'll uh, we will select browser document uh, complete so if you see here this is the one you have to choose so once you come here we have the grid like thing event associated view if you click on that view you'll have a grid control here so wherein you'll go ahead and select browser document complete 
so here once you click so click to add select the hosted control we created about uh, about to display the agent script the action to go to task and the data as the name of the agent script work we create greeting so if you see here we have the name load agent script greeting and the hosted control we will be calling here so and the action will be go to the task go to task so the data will be greeting so once created load the agent script back onto the browser document complete event so once you add that there so next you will be seeing uh, here in the left side we have the scripts being called this is called as agent script so now you can start uh, using the account i mean usd account and you can just be using it so this is what agent scripts uh, work like and uh, to me more precise then we have a small example you know how unified service disk add a crm dashboard or web page on a button click so how we do that so in usd we can display our dashboard from crm so in a usd we can display dashboard from crm so next determine the url of the crm dashboard so first you have to determine the url of this dashboard so to determine that you just need to go to the settings customization customize the system so once you go there just select the dashboards here so you just select the appropriate dashboard that you want to show in the unified service desk and on click of that you will be having the url that where you can copy so find where it says form id so if you see form id here so next after that percentage 7b you whatever the number comes so that will be your guid until the percentage 7d ends so this is called as your guid so if you just copy this you just go ahead and add the guid to this url so your organization name you will add and the guid you will be passing here so once uh, after this open this in a new browser so you will now see the dashboard in the full window so if you will be able to view the entire thing in a full window so this url will not appear to the, get the dashboard selector but to include this use this the use this url format okay so your organization and your your organization board id okay so this is how it works so let me go to the next one so let's access this through a toolbar so in usd so go to toolbars and open the existing main toolbar so if you just click on the toolbar here we'll add uh, we will add main in this example so but you can use the same logic to add a different toolbar suppose if you want different logic you can use a different one so click to add a new button so if you want to create a new button go ahead and add a new button and if you want you can add the image also after you name the button and the button text appropriately and the order will be sorted out by itself and if you see here we have once after that just need to save the toolbar to enable the actions so add an, a new action here so you can go ahead and always click on plus new button to add a new action so select the dashboard as the hosted control and navigate as the action so if you see here uh, we have the hosted control dashboard has been enabled so here we have in the data we are going to put the url here url of the crm dashboard as per the action instruction so you can go ahead and add this url so you have url the url is to navigate to the no scan so set this to true to prevent the data parameters from being captured from the data target otherwise set the set it to false or skip this parameter so you can hide this ribbon as well so set this to true to navigate to the inner uh, frame instead of loading the ribbon in a microsoft 365 page otherwise set to the false or skip the parameter add the action to the toolbar button so this is done automatically after this action is created so note to confirm the dashboard whether it is hosted or host uh, confirm the dashboard host control is set to the application is global so once you set this to global then you can access this even uh, even outside the session so this is how it looks uh, yeah so this is how it looks uh, so you have your customer service repository and the dashboard that we have so if you can see this is how it looks and now we have once you open the usd again you will now see the customer rep, uh, service rep uh, rep toolbar button here so this is what the name we gave in the toolbar so on clicking on, on this you will be able to see the dashboards that you had customized for uh, from the crm so this is it and thanks for now and i'll be handing over to hankita gupta 
over to you, Ankita. Yeah, thanks, Krupa, for the overview. Let me show you the demo uh, that later which we have implemented. Please let, let me know once my screen is visible to all. Krupa, shall I start? Is it visible? Yes, we can see your screen now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So as uh, Krupa told, uh, Krupa and Raj mentioned, USC is a, a product as a tool which is mostly used in the call center for the day-to-day -day, uh, tickets. Um, it's very helpful. So let me demo how it can be useful uh, in the day to day problem. So uh, we have created this simulator to as a de demo of uh, this phone call. We have not implemented the live phone call system. So we have this here. We are giving the uh, the patient who is calling and actually this accelerator is for the patient and the clinics. The patient is trying to reach the clinic. And this accelerator is helping them to uh, build a uh, schedule an appointment. So this is a patient number who is trying to reach and this is the clinic to which they want to contact. So let's me uh, it's like a call. I will raise a uh, do a call. So here is a clinic information which I want to connect. And this is a contact that let's suppose Prashad is a contact which you want to clinic with this uh, connect with ENT specialist. Now I'm the agent who is logged in. So I have the two options. Uh, I either I can disconnect the call or I can identify the purpose where the patient is calling. So this what agent script which Krupa is telling. This is the one. Thank you for calling the inspired education. My name is Ankita. Before we begin today, could you please provide me with your? So this is some uh, notes or greeting which we want to say to customer. Let's proceed and then like we think. Like, I don't want to disconnect from call. I want to proceed further. So I identify the purpose. Uh, this is related to the consultation setup. Uh, so still, uh, so I do the setup consultation. And I was looking that everything here is correct, like date of birth. If the date of birth is missing, I can add the date of birth. I will ask customer and I will add and I will add zip code. Everything is perfect. So I will qualify my patient. So if the person uh, connecting with me is a new and have not called before, the contact will create create in back in the CRM. And if the person is the existing our uh, customer, so it will fetch the updated details from there, or it will update the detail if something has changed or the bird, uh, the phone number has need to be updated or the email need to be. We can update that also in the CRM only. So let's suppose I want to start some question uh, to ask some question like. Uh, when was your last your sleep study date and what was your height or something? Suppose if I want to do some changes, I can do some changes and I can submit the form. So here are the options which Kripa is telling about. If I want to uh, follow up with him and it's not possible right now to complete the schedule appointment, I can create the create new follow up task. And this task will get created. All the fields are uh, populated. This is the basically a code which we have written in the background, which is responsible for all the things. And we can set like uh, we have to follow up till 30. And I have saved this task. And here is a schedule appointment. Uh, there's a two way possible uh, because the clinic has email and the phone number available. So I have the two options available with me phone and email. If the phone is not available, so I have only left with the one option. Let's suppose I want to try with the phone or uh, there's a third option also. Let's suppose I'm not satisfied this ENT clinic or this is far from my home or the facilities is not available or here I'm show, also showing the clinics hour like uh, what was the clinic time zone and what was the lunch hour Monday till what it is available. Also the physicians who will be available there related to my problems and this a clinic node is something clinics want to display on their behalf. So let's suppose if the physicians which I want to connect is not available, so I will say let's connect to an alternate clinic. I will start searching for the alternate clinic.
Uh, on the basis of the zip code, on the person, the patient who is calling us, on the basis of the person zip code, I will start for the search. This is the Azure integration. This, is a, this data is stored in some another through the help of Azure. We are displaying it here in the, or the, in the form of CRUD. So let's suppose I want to Marshfield to be connected. Marshfield is OK for me. So here now I'm connected to the Marshfield. Now the Marshfield details will be shown here. Thank you. Now I can schedule. Now the phone number is. Uh, I can schedule it into email. So it will uh, give a pop up. OK, your email the behave on behalf of you. We have already sent an appointment email request and. Uh, the clinic will contact you back or your appointment. Let's suppose this is the one patient who is trying to call. Let's suppose our next patient want to call a new call I have received. So I will call. I will dial another number. And here. The new patient has. Wait a minute. System is going to hang. Sorry guys for the weak network. So let's suppose Ankita is a new patient here and now he, she's trying to call. So same thing will happen as identify purpose of the caller disconnected. Now there are two sessions. First, the Prashad has called the same agent and now the Ankita has called the same agent. So there you can see the two session tab. So one, this is the separate session and this is the separate session, the information. But the the tool above, toolbar above this is it's a common tool. It's a global tool. This open dashboard, open knowledge base and the refresh task and the task. So whether you go to this session or this session, this area will be common and this is known as the global area. And within the session, it is as the session tabs. So let's suppose uh, the new session. I don't want this call uh, is done by mistakes. So I will call disconnected and this session will entirely get clean. Uh, let's suppose I will make uh, another call. And I will proceed to same scenario. So let's say here date of birth is missing, so I cannot qualify this patient. First of all, this information need to be filled mandatorily. Uh, let's suppose I fit this person date of birth. And the zip code is also mandatory. Without this, the patient cannot be qualified. Once the details are done, I can qualify the patient. Start the questionnaire. I have to fill this questionnaire form. Let's see. So even I want I want to go to previous script. I can go that I can come forward. So confirm clinic. Uh, it's like I want to confirm this clinic. I'm OK with this clinic. Yes, they were asking for some sort of referral. I do not have a referral, so it will come. The, the script is getting changed as per the scenario as the button you will click the script here will change and there are on the basis of it will pick the clinics and you can give the dynamic parameters here also. So let's suppose uh, I don't have referral and I want to give you a referral guide. So it will say proceed to referral and I can send you a mail to register for the referral guide. So here the email will get open. The patient email is coming here. Everything is pop up uh, to populated. Once it's done, I can send this and the email will send to the user. If the, if the task is done, 
I have options to end the phone call. I will fill here what was the appointment date which is get fixed to. And I will fill the reason why this call is there. Then I will save it. Once it's done, I have option to end the session. Once I end the session, the session is saved. And this phone call, the entire phone call will get stored in my CRM. The all information will that the task or whatever phone call, the contact, whatever I updated will be there in the CRM. So yeah, that's it, guy. Any questions from anyone? Here you can we still have. Yeah, go, go ahead, Anita. I can show you one example. Let's suppose I'm creating a status appointment check, and let's suppose I give the target time in back date. So I can show you one example. Let's see if. So currently I'm not the part uh, there is a task. Next task is a button. So basically this button what we'll do uh, whenever log. Uh, let's suppose we have a 10 agent in our organization and 10 agent is responsible for different different sort of tasks. Let, let's suppose I'm responsible for the appointment status and uh, Krupa is responsible for the follow up tasks. So uh, if there is an any appointment status check uh, is pending for two days eight, so the number will get displayed here. Let's suppose uh, one, uh, let's suppose five tasks is pending for you. Once I start clicking them, it will get open one by one for me. If they, now there is no follow up task, so it's coming zero. If there are five, so it will come five and I can open it one by one. And for Krupa, it will show their follow up task. Yeah. Let's suppose we open the dashboard. So here the my dashboard. It will show the available task. Right now there is no available task. If I want to see the all the tasks, this is the dashboard which Krapa is uh, talking about. We can show the CRM dashboard in the UST. Here I can see the task which has created in the past and all are just completed. If someone is in, in progress, it will come here in the available task list. Right now there is no available task, so it is coming as blank. Yes, Krapa, over to you. So we have still 30 minutes more. So any questions from anyone, please let us know. Thank you very much, Ankita and Krupa. Um, so what you've shown here is obviously the, the functionality of, of the Unified Service Desk. Um, I think it would be great uh, to um, explain to the audience because most of the audience probably hasn't seen the Unified Service Desk. So it would be a great opportunity to show them the different components of the, for example, this Windows client um, to show the different areas of, of the um, Unified Service Desk client um, so that they have some awareness of the components of how it works because our later session shows omni-channel and so it will be a great opportunity to compare against uh, the omni-channel which is um, one of the newest solutions Microsoft has offered so is that something that you could spend a bit a little bit of time doing just going through the interface and the different components with inside of the um, unified service desk so that the audience has a bit a better idea as to exactly how it is all kind of tied together. Would that would that be okay, Ankita? Uh, Raz, Krupa, is it possible right now? I don't uh, Raz, actually, we don't that. have the license, but this was a dummy one that we had with us. Yeah, and we are not able to log in that one. That's fine, cool, okay. It's just that we've got half an hour still, you see, guys, so so wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that the audience um, was using the opportunity um, to learn um, and to benefit from this session. Um, so we have a question from NG who's asking, can yeah. we see how you have configured the agent script that you have given the demo about? Yeah, that is all from the model driven app we have in CRM, just like other apps from there. We have different options, agent script, uh, but right now we are unable to show it. But uh, from the 
Krupa PPT, I can explain you. Let me go ahead and share the screen, Ankita. You can go ahead and explain. Yes, Ankita, over to you. So, uh, if it's a hosted country, you have to go to the agent script. Yeah, you can find the documentation on the docs.microsoft uh, or there's a uh, one blogger, Neil Parkhas, that is also very helpful. So, from there, you can learn how to set up this. Yeah, agent script. Krupa is a hosted control. Do we have something about agent script? So there's a question um, from support asking, is there any documentation as to how this could be configured? Especially yeah, right. I, I can share the, the link. I can share the link. How to set it up. Yeah, I can share the link in the chat. I will share it later. Uh, Raz, it is only one concern that we should have license to, you know, uh, enable the USD and show entirely the entire demo. So just since we had a sample demo, uh, I mean, you know, a demo which is not re which does not require license i'm a sample one so that's the one ankita showed so due to that we are lacking for the demo here well, sorry yeah, for we, that we, we, we really appreciate um obviously you being able to obviously because I, I know how how complex it is to set up unified service desk um you know the components uh, and the installation process um of, of the windows client and then everything else so yeah completely appreciate that um guys so thanks again for for demoing what you could demo uh, on this session um we still got half an hour guys we still got half an hour um to uh share with the community um a, a bit more about um how they could understand um the call center implementation so one of the things you didn't cover in your session was on the um, on the call center CTI integration, right? Yeah, Raz. So that we have not implemented. Uh, we are using the dummy one CTI simulator uh, to test the things that it is working fine or not. So, um, okay. so would you like to um kind of uh, share with the community the different options, for example? with the um with the CTI integration. So for the audience here today, the CTI integration is basically whereby um your telephony system that's yes. implemented in the organization is able mm -hmm. to open the record dynamically um from um within U USD, right? So USD provides CTI integration controls to to allow you to do that so that when a call is is received it's routed automatically mm -hmm. um for an agent to pick up and then it brings up the record details um of that specific customer um so that, that's one of the the, the, the key functionalities is of 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 unified service desk um and in addition to that there's the multi-session capability which i think is one of the key key value um i know the agent script is is one of them and that's what you've shown today you've, you've given a good demonstration of how the agent scripts work whereby um the agent scripts can uh, can be set up to uh help guide the user to um the agent anyway to um manage the call effectively um but but in addition um there you go so we have yes. So what you are talking about is a multi session. Yes, so I already shown. So this is the first patient which is trying to reach uh, that agent. Next, uh, next is Ankita who is trying to reach, uh, who is calling the same agent. So this is a multi session. I can also add two, three, four calls, and so the max session we can have is ten. Like ten percent can call at a time. So if you see here, on the basis of this phone number. 
I'm identifying like say six five one this phone number I'm identifying who is calling. If I will change this phone number, the screen here will get changed. Let's suppose I enter some random number here. So uh, here it was saying this number is not in our contact. So this means this number is not in our contact. Uh, in our CRM database, uh, this is something new. So they will ask for the what is your first name? Uh, let's suppose uh, and let's suppose making me make it for Krupa. And I write some email. I will say identify purpose. Now the contact will get saved in my database. So this is the uh, what you were talking about the multiple session within the USD. Now here is the Prashad is calling. So every information related to Prashad will open like the phone call related to Prashad. See here the phone every detail you can see uh, if you came to the timeline. Good. In the contact if I will go. So everything here related to old tasks modified the milestone which they have received the phone call the email everything here you can see related to prashad only the previous records let's suppose i want to open this uh, the phone call The phone call related to Prashad will get open. If I uh, go to the Ankita, so the Ankita uh, phone call will get open. So what um, what mm -hmm. uh, Krupa and Ankita are showing you here, guys, is the reason why unify a, a solution like Unified Service Desk is required. Um, above and beyond the Dynamics 365 web application. So there are certain constraints you have in a web application um, which you can achieve with Unified Service Desk to allow this multi-session capability on um, the complex agent scripting um, as well as a CTI um, integration capabilities. Um, so that's, that's, that's a very key thing to understand here. But what's also important for everyone to understand is the fact that Microsoft have now overcome some of these challenges. So the challenges that were present before um, with web clients and with browsers, Microsoft has started to address with the Omnichannel, with Dynamics 365 Omnichannel, where you can now start to do a lot of this with inside. Um, they've architected uh, the solution to be able to deliver a lot of these capabilities uh, with inside of a browser. Uh, which we will be showing in the following sessions later on today, where um, we have both Neil Parker. So Neil Parker is someone who's been very prominent um, in Unified Service Desk, as well as Sri from Microsoft, who will both be showing how to deliver these enterprise-wide call center requirements using Omnichannel for Dynamics 365. So uh, that's why it was a very very important for um, us to uh, bring along Ankita and Krupa today um, to show you exactly how call centers currently operate using this Windows based client, um, which is the unified service. Uh, there is a question from um, someone from. Um, so if you could change your name to your real name, please. I'm uh, referring to support, but uh, your question is, is there a way to integrate um, the phone system for this. So that's what uh, Ankita was referring to earlier, that there is CTI integration capabilities um, inside of Unified Service Desk. And that provides some um, capabilities to um, standard capabilities for some standard CTI integration. So some of the more uh, prominent Citrix uh, uh, clients, um, you have the ability to uh, use them. Um, there's also third party connectors you can use for the CTI integration. So that's all as part of the installation pack. 
for Unified Service Desk. So Seto is asking any update on Internet Explorer support for previous versions of US USD. Now that IE is no longer supported. Great question, Setu. I don't know if Krupa or if Ankita know the answer to that one regarding uh, Internet Explorer um, support for previous versions of USD. Uh, no, Raj, I need to look into it. Uh, mm. No, that's because, fine. I mean, yeah, look, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, as you know, Microsoft are still maintaining USD. Um, yeah. However, um, with um, with Internet Explorer no longer, obviously, um, w w with it's with with it being it, uh, obviously, Microsoft has been warning the community for a long time now that Internet Explorer is being deprecated. So. Um, yeah, I'm sure if we go on the doc site, uh, we can find that information out in relation to that. But I can imagine that it won't be supporting Intel Explorer uh, anymore. Uh, so uh, it'll definitely be Edge, Microsoft Edge, that they'll be supporting as pro Chrome probably as well. So Jiva, uh, oh yeah, Jiva saying, yeah, looking forward to Neil Parker's session later on today. Uh, thank you for support. So your name is Jagger. Thank you for um, your questions today. Um, so um, the next session does start in 20 minutes time, guys, um, and it will be on field services. Um, so apologies for obviously the session being cut short a little bit. Um, but I think the important thing that you needed to know about Unified Service Desk um, has been shown by both Krupa uh, and by Ankita. So um, thank you so much, guys. Um, we still have um, 20, 15 minutes left till the next session, which is none other than Jiva, who will be um, going back to Unified Service Desk. Um, Jiva, I know he's been very much involved in uh, Dynamics 365 field service implementations for many years now. So very excited to 